Today we'll talk about query function. At least we'll start talking about it because the function is pretty intense and uh, this will be just the beginning, probably the first one out of a series because uh, it's probably going to be taking a long time to explain. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what does query function do? First of all, if you are uh, familiar with SQL or what some people call SQL uh, then uh, a lot of this is gonna be pretty similar otherwise just follow the videos and you'll figure out what's going on uh, query function can do a lot and in this video we'll just cover some bare basics of what it can do what I'm going to do is just get started, I guess it's the best way. So usually you use query function when you have some sort of data and you want to extract uh, either a, a part of that data or uh, you want to do some sort of aggregate operation on it. So you want to sum something based on something else. So think about like a situation of sum ifs or pivot table. If you ever used one of those functionalities, it would be sort of similar. So I'm gonna go under this tab called query and data I'm gonna be using is whatever's on this tab. So I'm gonna go back to here and I'll go ahead and get started with my equals query function. And the first parameter is gonna be the data we'll be using. The initial data is gonna be this data on this tab. So I'm gonna click here uh, on the end of this data. Then I'm gonna do control shift left and down arrow keys to highlight my data so that's the data I'm going to use I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and hit F4 just for good practice so comma and then the next one is the actual query that you're going to run which will be as a string so that means we need to use quotes from both ends of that and we'll get to that query and that's where we're gonna concentrate mostly but finally there is also the last parameter which is how many header rows your data has now in this particular case if we look at our data we have one top row that's our header row so I'm gonna provide one for my header row close my function and right here we're gonna pass the query that we're going to use so uh, similar to SQL syntax you're gonna start with your select keyword I guess that's what we're gonna call this and then uh, we're gonna say what do we want to return as an end result so let's say what I want to return as an end result is the list of all brands and the sales column so the brand is in E column so I'm gonna say select E and then comma and then the sales is my F column so I'm just gonna stop at that so I'm gonna select E and F columns out of this data I'm gonna hit enter and let's give it a second I guess and there it is that's my data so basically I'm pulling that data out of that tab and I only picked two columns out of that data by doing this so uh, what I'm actually going to do I'm going to take this function out of this cell uh, let's clear this out and I'm gonna actually place it starting here let's go ahead and get it to run and what I really want to do the reason I did this is uh, instead of me going back to the actual function and trying to retype the actual query I'm gonna put my query over here and I'm simply going to link to it from my formula so I'll just say my query is gonna be this we should get us the same result and this way I can just type here without having to go back to the formula every time to update it so far we just extracted two columns so let's say I wanted to extract all the brands and sales uh, for the year 2016 so the year is in our H column what I can do I can use this where statement so I'm gonna go back go back in here and I'll go back here and use my where statement 
and uh, the column I believe I said was age and I'm gonna say where age equals two and in single quotes I'm gonna provide what it's gonna be equal to so I'm gonna say it should be equal to 2016 and in this particular case because it's a number I should be able to actually just not do those single quotes and say equals 2016 so let's go ahead and try that so there it is so I was able to extract everything that is 2016 in this year now I'm curious what's going to happen if I actually do provide the single quotes meaning it's gonna look as text let's see if we get anything so we don't so obviously the it turns out uh, the type of the data matters so uh, if it's a number 2016 you have to actually provide it as a number without those single quotes but if we're looking for text we would have to provide single quotes so to give you an example of that let's do something that's not a number so this 2016 that's what we have now let's say we want to pick everything that's from the state of Illinois so that's D column and we want to pick everything that's Illinois go back here and instead of age I'm gonna say it D and it's the state of Illinois so there we are let's extract everything out of state of Illinois the one problem is here we can't even tell if it's actually extracting the right thing since we're extracting Illinois but we're not bringing that column in so that Illinois column is column D so let's also select that as a result so we're gonna do E F and D where D is Illinois so we should be able to see that everything in this column is Illinois so we basically we were able to filter our data from here so we're filtering the Illinois column we're picking everything that's Illinois out of it and bringing come on I keep hitting on this tab while I should be tabbing here now let's say I wanted to pick everything that's in the state of Illinois right but also that's only 2016 so I want the year as well so age column here so I'm going to say where D equals Illinois and age equals 2016 so again if we were really trying to figure out what's going on we could just also add the column age here so we can see that it's actually 2016 so we're picking all the sales that are in that state that we want and the year that we want now we could also uh, keep expanding and do another end so what if we want all the sales that are in Illinois and in Indiana or California or something like that let's go with California Illinois and California so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say where D equals IL or in this case D equals CA so there it is now I didn't do that year statement we're just picking Illinois and California now what if I wanted to do this right but I just wanted the year 2016 so what I can do I can wrap this entire thing in parentheses right here so this should still work right and then I'm gonna add an and statement and I'm gonna say and and I wish I remembered the column but since we have it here it should be easy so that's apparently column age so age equals 2016 and there it is now we're picking all Illinois and California and the year is 2016 in those columns so that's so far equal statements so what if we want to pick uh, all the sales that are above a certain number so we want to pick all the sales that are greater than what numbers we have here 
I don't know, I'm going to try $500. So the sales column is the column F, so that's the second column here, so F is greater than, and I said 500, so that's not going to include 500, but anything above 500 should be in there. So there it is, now we're picking all the numbers that are greater than 500. We could obviously continue this and, and say, and the year is 2016, or we could also say, and age, is greater than uh, 2016, right? So everything that's greater than 2016, which is not going to include 2016 in it. So you can see you get all 2017s here. So if we also wanted to include 2016, we could say greater or equal to 2016. So now we have the 2016, 2017, and everything that's greater than 500 in there. You can also sort your result. So let's say we wanted to sort by sales numbers and we wanted the highest sale on top or the lowest sale on top. So you do this by adding an order by statement. So we're going to order by the sales column. So the sales column is F. So again, it's not the column here, it's the column of our data, right? So so that's the F column in there. So now we have this data ordered. Now you can see that the regular order is going to put the lowest value all the way on top and the highest value all the way down. So we can change that by adding descending in the end. So now we're ordering by column F and the highest value is all the way on top. So let's simplify this, just get to just years uh, 20, I'm going to just get this to equals 2017, order by sales number. So we should still get that highest sales number there, but we now should have more results because well, we didn't filter for sales that are greater than a certain number, right? So we're going to still order by F. So let's say if you wanted to get the top 10 sales in 2017, and you don't want to get all these results, right? We just want to get the top 10. We could also use a limit close in the end. So we can say limit 10. So again, if you are familiar with SQL, none of this should be new to you, so that should make complete sense. So that's it, top 10 results from 2017, highest sale right there, right? Uh, and if you wanted to get the lowest 10 results, instead of sorting this descending, we could just do our regular sort, which will be our ascending sort. So there it is, that's our lowest 10 numbers out there. So you can use your where close, uh, order by to order your data, where to filter your results, and finally select, you select which column you want returned. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, so the next one, let's see if I can find a good example to do some... Mm. like statements yeah we should be able to do this so I'm gonna do some like statements so you can see how that works and usually that works if you're trying to find some text that contains something so let's say I want something that includes Western in here so that's essentially it's gonna pick Midwestern and it's gonna pick uh, what else uh, just Western I guess so both of them. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say where and should probably return that column. So that's our C column. So let's make sure we return that column as well because otherwise it's not going to make a lot of sense. So I'm going to, so we can see and compare. And I'm going to say where C is like 
and here we have to provide that pattern so I said Western right that's uh, what I was looking for so if I just do Western that shouldn't return anything because that should be kind of like saying equal to but uh, the way you can use the wild cards before and after so I can use this percentage sign before and percentage sign after my Western and you should see that what we have returned is a lot of Midwesterns here so if I go back we'll see that we got Midwestern but we didn't actually get Western because Western is has a capital W in there so if we switch that to instead of Western we can do Eastern I guess so we can see how we returned Midwestern we did Western as a result because now we're not looking at that first character and you know it's matching that now what you can do you can uh, do something that starts with something so if you do mid and then you do uh, this percentage sign you're saying that it has to start with mid no characters before that and then it can contain other characters after mid so they should match our midwestern as an end result so that's our like so technically with like you can do two things so you can do either this uh, percentage sign so uh, that's our wild card and you're basically saying it's zero or uh, more characters on that side where you put the wild card so you can do wild card before and you can do wild card after and that's kind of how your wild cards work there now you can also use underscore characters I'm trying to find a good example to use underscore on it probably our data is not best example so actually I'm gonna use this K column that should work just fine so let's go ahead and return that so instead of C let's do K and I'm gonna say that the K is like so we can do 2015 and then we can do our wildcard character so that's gonna return everything that starts with 2015 in there right so there it is see 2015 everything in this GS date column is being returned now what if I want 2015 any month the seventh day so I want any month the seventh day get back here I can modify this and I can use this underscore character so this means exactly one any character in there so we're saying it should be 2015 then one character after that and another character after that and then it should be 07 so see what we get there it is so we got 2015 0507 2015 0607 everything that ends with 07 and starts with 2015 so if I did something like four underscores here, it means get any six characters that end with zero seven after those six characters. So that's our like operator. So I think I'm gonna end this video on this. Uh, and then on the next video, I'm going to talk about another operator where you can use regular expression to actually extract uh, matches using your query function.